because I usually try to steal at least one thing from oh, every okay. every job. But I did I steal anything? <laughs> Just between me and you, you know. What to... I mean, beyond beyond a T-shirt that they let me have. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Pop in the Culture, your weekly entertainment check-in, and me. I am your host with the most mojo, of course. That's right, it's me, Mr. Hollywood himself, Matt Demers. We got such a great show coming your way, as always, but today's extra special because I got Ferdinand Kingsley. He's one of the stars of the new Netflix series, The Sandman. Guys, you do not want to miss this chat. So great. Speaking of great, we're kicking things off, as always, with our Hollywood headlines. All right, and here to help me break it all down is my man, Cassius Morris. Hey, Cassius, how's it going? Matt Demirs, it's good to be back. Well, it's glad to have you back uh, because we got a lot to talk about. We're jumping in right now with some interesting stuff in the world of Batman. I love me some Batman. And one of the actors that played Batman not too long ago, Ben Affleck, well, he's coming back yet again. This uh, comes after the heels of a social media post on Instagram by Jason Momoa saying that Ben Affleck will be in Aquaman 2. He'll be reprising his role as Bruce Wayne, Batman. Uh, this because of a tour bus that was touring fans in Warner Brothers Studios saw Ben Affleck on set. So they had to make the announcement. It's kind of funny wow. to me. But it is kind of exciting to see that Ben Affleck, because, listen, he was known as the sad Batman, right? There was right. all these memes of him in the interview <laughs> looking sad in the role. But I always thought he was a great Batman. Uh, so what do you make of this? Because we got him back for another movie. I think it's great. You know, I, I, I don't have the uh, hate on Ben Affleck gene that the public seems to have lately. You know, I think Batman is just one of those characters. There's obviously going to be many different people who play it. And you're not going to like, you know, if there's 10 different guys playing a character, you're not going to like them all. That's right. You're right. But here's what's also interesting. And I want your take on this because... okay. Affleck is also going to be, so he's in Aquaman 2, this was just announced, but we already know that he's going to be reprising his role in The Flash movie, which is coming out in uh, 2023, so not till next year. That makes Ben Affleck's Batman uh, the most reoccurring in any movie, more than any other actor that played the role. So now Ben So that's Affleck, a big stat. So, I mean, he, he's earning his keep in the Batman franchise. Yeah. I, I mean, if you look at who reprised the role the most, he's king. Uh, who's your favorite though? Like, cause we, cause right now that's always the debate. So right. we got Ben Affleck's Batman. We got Michael Keaton, mm -hmm. right? The, the one Adam West, if you want to go back to the TV series, Way back. That, the movies in the 60s. Uh, who else we got? Oh, Robert Pattinson. Can't forget about the new mm -hmm. Batman. Of course, Val Christian Bale. Oh yeah, of course. Christian Bale. <laughs> People probably yelling at their screens yeah. right now. <laughs> uh, Val Kilmer did one and, George Clooney, but the less we say about that, the better. Uh, who's your fave? Who's the best Batman? Cassius Morris, your pick is? Well, I definitely grew up on the George Clooney, but that was only acceptable because I was like five years old. So uh, I would say definitely Christian Bale is, is my favorite Batman, but I would say my favorite Batman, it's a tie between the, the Dark Knight and the Robert Pattinson one. I got to say, like Pattinson isn't my favorite Batman, but I think that movie was one of the strongest of the series. I loved it. I love that movie so, so much. And I think Pattinson slowly creeping up. I want to see him again and they're going to do yeah. another Batman. I want to see more of his tape because I like what he was doing, but I think you're right. Christian Bale, the dark Knight, still holds a special place in my heart. My fave of all time. I got to go Michael Keaton. Okay. Yeah. Maybe... He's a classic. He used, it was a pretty trail. And you know what? Michael Keaton's coming back too. Speaking of all these other Batman's reprising their roles, Michael Keaton's coming back in the flash. So we it's shall see. Season. <laughs> especially for batman <laughs> right? especially for batman yeah if wow. only adam west was still with us he'd probably uh be able to don the uh, cape and cowl one more time so that's exciting stuff <laughs> <laughs> i just love how fans discovered the the secret everything's a secret but not so right? much the bat is out of the bag hey uh let's move on to something else that a lot of people are chatting about and we can't seem to stop talking about it here on this show and that is the oscar slap now the latest revelation well there's actually a few is that uh, will smith put out a 
a video apology right on his youtube channel it uh, it's out there he talked for six minutes he did apologies to chris uh family members of the rock family uh, the mom the brother tony all that stuff well chris rock gave his most direct response yet uh this coming at a comedy show and this is what he said this is interesting to me because he was quoted here uh cash is saying everybody's trying to be the uh bleeping victim if everybody claims to be a victim then nobody will hear the real victims. Even me getting mm. smacked by Suge Smith. I went to work <laughs> the next day. I got kids. So Chris Rock essentially saying, guys, I'm not a victim. What it's do you not that? that well, I mean, I like that outlook. You know, Chris Rock, especially as a, you know, he's the resident funny man in, in most people's lives. And I think that the way he is, you know, this is a good way to do it. I, I don't think playing the victim and, and hiding in a corner is the answer. You know, Chris also seen the day after the slap walking around in public, he went right back on stage. Okay. So I actually think, I don't know if you agree, Matt, but I think this is a good way that Chris is handling this so far. I think it's great. I think it's great. I think right now, and Will Smith's trying his damnedest to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to get in the good graces of everybody that may have turned their back on him. And there's also a source that's saying that uh, Chris Rock has moved on. And, <laughs> and this is something that's bothering Will Smith more than Chris Rock. That's how I'm it still, seems. I'm still holding out hope that Chris Rock returns to host the Oscars next year. That's a, that's Ooh. actually a legit rumor. Wow, with co-host Will Smith. <laughs> well, he's been banned. They'd have to lift the ban, but I would I would watch. Yeah, that's true. I'd watch the heck out of that. Uh, before we move on from this, what do you make of Will Smith's uh, apology? Because he's he essentially said a lot of stuff in that video. If you haven't yeah. seen it, but one of them too that he was saying is that this isn't Jada's fault. Uh, that seemed to be the the message he put across that this was his decision to go up on stage. Uh, what do you make of that? Are you are you buying this? It was a bit of a PR stunt, in my opinion, but I think he seemed genuine. Yeah, but I'm sure he is genuine. Uh, you know, people use the, use the phrase too little, too late. I think this is too much too late. Um, you know, I, I honestly feel like you would have done this in a personal voice memo to the Rock family. You could have sent them the video. You could have sent them a letter. I don't see necessarily the fit of public because I don't think it makes him look any better. You know, I mean, and especially with it being so long after, if this would have been even two weeks after, I think it made a bit more sense, but this seems almost out of the blue now. And, and like you're saying Matt, it seems like Chris is, you know, on to bigger and will is still sort of in this. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the fact, well, Chris, uh, Chris Rock, who's uh, doing a lot of comedy with uh, Kevin Hart, um mm. and uh, dave Chappelle actually showed up at one of their shows and they actually brought out a goat like an actual goat an actual goat <laughs> to say that chris rock was the, the goat. goat i love that and i That's love all amazing. three of those guys so, but listen if you want to laugh kevin hart dave Chappelle, chris rock are you kidding me uh yes. they will oh they're fantastic the, the mount rushmore right there all right let's move on uh to the last thing for us and uh hey speaking of things we can't stop talking about we're still talking about that Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial that captivated the world. Uh, and now, hey, Cassius, if we thought that we saw everything during the trial, we didn't because now the pre-trial documents are being unsealed. Now we're seeing the stuff Ooh. that didn't make it to trial. There's actually some pretty crazy stuff coming out of this. There was actually 6,000 pages of documents. So here are some, some things that are of, of note that didn't make it in, unseal some nude photos of Amber Heard into evidence. I think this may have been their way of showing maybe the, the, the severity of the injuries that she was saying that she had. Maybe that's where that come in, but we could have had mm -hmm. some nude photos out there of Amber Heard. Wow. Those didn't make it in. Uh, yeah. Amber Amber Heard's team wanted to, to raise a point saying that uh, Johnny Depp had erectile dysfunction and he needed medication <laughs> for that. Uh, well, but, that'll get him. That'll lock him up. The jury said no, or the judge rather said no. We don't, we don't need that in front of the jury. And uh, and then of right. course there was even more text messages. They're saying that there was some more between uh, Marilyn Manson and, okay. and Johnny Depp. They keep trying know. to bring Marilyn Manson into it. I th I mean, it may, from a lawyer perspective, if you have a guy who's on trial for his own craziness and he's deeply connected to you know the guy you're against, I get him up, but. You know, the Marilyn Manson stuff. Yeah, I, I feel like there was a lot of stuff, especially when it comes to Depp, where the court, it seemed like a lot of the evidence against Depp seemed to be somewhat 
you know, like I felt like there was all this random stuff and it was more of a character assassination than sort of dealing with the task at hand. And that's why I'm not really surprised that he came out victorious in this case, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, there was some all I'm, I'm 6,000 pages of <laughs> documents. I'm sure more stuff will come out of this. We yeah. haven't stopped talking about it. And Amber Heard's team is still trying to get the verdict thrown out. And every time they've done that, uh, the motion gets the, the judge. They're not going for it. So I don't know. I don't think we've seen the end of this. Uh, Johnny Depp seems to have moved down somewhat. He's doing lots of He's playing of with Jeff Beck. He, he was out in Europe. And I mean, you know, it's it's I, I love the memes. I keep seeing Amber Heard uh, in line for Squid Games. That's uh, that, that's the, the best thing. She's probably going to need it soon because I don't think that's getting overturned. No, you're right. And it's and that's another headline is that Amber Heard doesn't have the money to pay Johnny <laughs> Depp after all this. So, huh, yeah, it's not looking good. She for probably her. regrets. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that her main feeling right now is probably regret. I, I think that she really had a good feeling she would win this. And uh, it seems to have blown up in her face. So, you know, justice is served, I guess, is what they say. The court of public opinion has spoken. Did Amber, <laughs> Amber, you got the you got the L, unfortunately. Um, all right, folks, uh, that's going to do it for this Hollywood Headlines. Thanks so much, Cassius, for joining me. Thank you, Matt. It's a pleasure. But you know what? I don't need you to go anywhere because we still got to take a little trip. The trip is beyond the list. All right, Cassius, here's what we do. We uh, go in the vast archives of Watch Mojo. We pluck out a top 10 list and we go beyond the list. What the heck does that mean? It means me and you get to riff a little. We get to have some fun. We get to say whether or not Watch Mojo got it right or wrong. Not sure if that really fits with today's category. We're talking top 10 incredibly weird celebrity rituals. Well, I guess we can talk about whether we think they're weird, whether or not we would do it. But before we get into it, do you have a ritual? Maybe it's weird. Maybe it's not weird. Does Cassius hmm. Morris have a ritual? Is my ritual weird? Well, I think too much coffee is my ritual. And it's not necessarily one I'm proud of. I'm trying to break it. But actually, even before breakfast, I'm I'm a two or three cup of coffee guy. So oh, maybe wow. that, I think that's weird to a lot of people. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, a lot of coffee. A lot of coffee. You got to start your day with the coffee. If you don't start your day with the coffee, does that mean your day is going to go downhill? I, I need like one of those mugs. Like, don't talk to me until I finish this cup. <laughs> like one of those dad mugs. Yeah, I definitely need that. <laughs> it's like seeing those like Garfield on it, you know? It's yeah, like, exactly. In a, in a house coat. <laughs> Absolutely. I was trying to think if I have a ritual. Um, I mean, if I'm thinking of things that I do consistently, I get my hair cut every, it has to be every two weeks, no more, or else I get oh. really frustrated. Uh, if I can do less than two weeks, sure. But every two weeks, I can't go At past least two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. That's a good rule of thumb. That's my, that's my, I think that's my ritual. I don't know if that you count that as a ritual. Let's see what other people have. Uh, Watch Mojo put down some celebrities that have incredibly weird ones. This one is kind of weird. Number 10 is Mark Zuckerberg. He's got one shirt, Cassius. Do you know about this? You know what? All the pictures of him are starting to, uh, to like come into my mind. And I, I guess I did because I've never seen him wearing anything different. It's the same gray t-shirt that he wears pretty much every day. I mean, there's some other shirts I guess the guy has, but this is the one that, that he can be seen in the most. But he's got many, it's kind of like, you know, like cartoons where they wear the same clothes and you see their closet. And it's the like same the, shirt. The closet full of the same, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what, apparently that's what Zuckerberg's closet looks like because he's he's got this one shirt and he says, the, the, the reason why it's something called decision fatigue. He doesn't want to think about it. He's got so much stuff to think about this guy that he doesn't mm. want to think about what, what color shirt to wear. He just wants to have one that he really likes. Uh, the shirt's not cheap, by the way. What is it? It's a watch Mojo tells us it's a Brunello uh, and it's $400 a piece. Oh, see, I was going to ask, are we talking old Navy or are we talking like <laughs> some real, because that that's, that's a pretty classic billion. And once you get super rich, the, the plain t-shirt and jeans that are like 800 each is a pretty like art style too, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but wow. I, I, I mean, find... Zuckerberg's a quirky guy. There's no question about that. Sometimes if I find a shirt that I, that fits nice and I like, I'll, I'll do like maybe one other color. You know what I mean? I'm not going to yeah. make that my entire wardrobe though. So <laughs> it's kind of strange. He is a quirky guy. You ever see the one where he's like, it's not jet skis. I don't know what the heck he's on, but he's got the some American sort of flag. water ski. Yeah, that is a bizarre. I feel like any billionaire who gets out on the water just automatically looks odd. Elon Musk, Mark, I like, was... just stay inside. 
It looks like Elon Musk has only stayed inside. That guy had <laughs> quite the white complexion. I shouldn't talk. So, I probably I test the stocks because he's been working. That's what somebody was saying. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I probably look similar, by the way. <laughs> All right, number nine, White Rabbit. This is from James McAvoy. So here's what here's the, and I've heard this actually. This is not uh, incredibly strange, I guess. Watch Mojo. So the the ritual is that the beginning of every month, the first day of every month, you have the first thing you say to somebody is White Rabbit, hmm. and it's a good luck thing. And James McAvoy, who has played everyone from I don't know, he was Professor X in the in the remakes of the X Men. He's also been in movies like Split. Uh, he says this is, he swears by this. It's giving him good luck and he won't stop doing it. Wow. See, rather... I remember this from elementary school kind of thing, but it, it way after that, I wonder why he stuck to it for so long. Yeah. Something to do with, and you can also say, some people say rabbit, rabbit. That's Just, like a one. double rabbit. Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's like Beetlejuice, like, like two, two thirds of the Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it with rabbits, by the way, for good luck? Cause they also have. The rabbit's foot. That's a that's a thing, right? People care. Yeah, around. I mean, white rabbit always all all types of different strange meanings. You know, you look at Alice in Wonderland, time. You know, psychedelic r references. So yeah, it's very. very I, I have to go back on my history with the rabbit, the rabbit stuff. The Matrix. That's yeah, yeah. All the white yeah, rabbit. That's 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 actually that's true. Yeah, probably a lot. Yeah, probably a lot of history behind that. But that's what James McAvoy does. So if you ever see McAvoy, the first of the month, in That'd the be morning. So weird. <laughs> Just say, just look at him and say white rabbit. He will know. He will know. He'll know. Okay. Here's, we talked about Christian Bale earlier. One of the, one of the actors that played Batman. I mean, obviously he's a very intense guy. He's coming he in at number eight and his superstition is his ritual. He doesn't have one. He's actually anti superstition, meaning he'll go out of his way to like, not follow them. If there's a, you know, the thing, <laughs> don't walk under a ladder. He'll walk Christian, under a ladder. <laughs> Christian Bale will walk under a ladder. Uh, he he pretty much does the opposite of all things lucky. That's what that's what it's black. <laughs> he's just yeah, he's not a skeptic in any way. Just uh, he will just do the opposite. It's working for him, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe I should start walking under ladders because uh, Christian Bale's paycheck, I, I assume, isn't too bad. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. The black. Oh, what a, don't cross the black cat. Don't walk under ladders. All kinds of stuff. He'll Walk under it. it with a black cat in your arms. That's the key to success. Break a mirror. Christian Bale yeah. doesn't care. <laughs> I've, broken, I've broken mirrors. Oh, no, in seven years. Yeah. I've I broken them I... by accident just looking in them. Other than that, I haven't <laughs> done much. <laughs> Number seven. Oh, this is right up your alley. This is uh, Eminem, one of the uh, rap gods. And he can only sleep, Cassius. If you ever have Eminem crashing at your house, he can only Okay, I better be if... prepared. Pitch black. You have to make it pitch, pitch black. Not even, not even a little bit of light. It's saying Eminem likes it. Or doesn't even like it. He needs it to be pitch black. That's what it's saying. Um, this is interesting because uh, I feel like a lot of musicians, when it comes to sleep, there's always a, a thing here. And, uh, and Elvis was the same way. The guy couldn't sleep. That's why he hmm. you know, ended up taking all that that medication. Is it the adrenaline? Is it uh, what is it? I think it's it's probably a combination, right? I mean, you, you think about the decision fatigue with a guy like Zuckerberg. Obviously, he's got a lot more to take on, but these guys aren't too far off. You know, like every day, day in and day out, it's it's just constant. So, I mean, I'm sure it, it causes a lot of problems. And we've heard of it, everybody from actors, you know, Bill Jackson, you mm. know. So, yeah, it's, it's a common issue. And, you know, that's interesting about Eminem, though. I, uh, I wouldn't have guessed that about him exactly. Yeah, he says uh, lights cause stimulation. Uh, for him and, and and if it's black he can kind of shut off his brain makes sense and his hit I mean, song I... darkness i don't want to be alone in the darkness is the hook of that song what do you what do you mean eminem tell us the truth you do want to be <laughs> there you go <laughs> uh but no that's i'm i'm similar i'm i'm a guy that needs i don't need a pitch pitch black i can have a little bit of light but i need it pretty dark yeah i, I don't no. think that's too quirky to be honest no that's not too too insane let's see but the next one we're almost at the midway point number six is uh superstitions galore oh so the opposite the opposite of, of christian christian bale so here's who is uh following everything uh kit harrington from uh Ooh. got game of thrones harrington will do everything um yeah so so literally the opposite of what we talked about so they say he has ocd though so that's i mean that's a serious that, that's almost beyond superstitions yeah it's he does things three times i've heard of this too 
Uh, he kisses the stage three times before a show. Before he takes a flight, he must touch the outside of the plane three times before entering. Ooh. So three so is his number. That's what they're saying. The number three is a, it has a loving history associated with luck. So he likes to likes to put that into things. That's interesting. That is interesting. I have to touch the plane once before I get on. At least is that once, a thing? But three. Yeah, I, I, I've always heard that was good luck. So that, that's actually maybe my weird superstition. I've I've touched the plane before every flight I've been on. I hate flying, but I don't really have a thing to get on the flight. Maybe I should start doing that. You're just like close your eyes and, and clutch onto the seat and <laughs> just like I take that's that usually my method too. I take that little bit of medication my doctor gave me. To make that's it, right? <laughs> no, I hate. I, I hate. I'll get out of anything to get out of flying. I will, but if I got to do it, I'll do it. That's Actually, one time, the last time I flew, uh, you know who was on my flight, and I knew I was going to be fine. It was Danny Trejo. You know Danny Trejo? Oh, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was a flight from Toronto to Los Angeles. And Danny Trejo, when I walked on, he was in first class. Obviously, I wasn't. Uh, but I was like, yo, they can't. This this flight's not going down. The Danny air marshal Tre just, just deboarded as they saw he was there. They're like, we're good. We're good. Danny Trejo is on my flight. Nothing bad can happen. I guarantee it. Uh, number five, make a wish at 1111. Who does it? Paris Hilton. Oh, really? She, I thought that was just a catchphrase, but this is a real thing. Well, it's, it's something that she does. She okay. and actually, you know what? Oh, this I've seen her tweet this. This is this is so true. I've seen Paris Hilton tweet out 11 11 make a wish, and she'll actually take the picture of her clock or whatever. I don't <laughs> wow, know. there you go. So she keeps us updated with, with every I wonder what she's wishing for at this point. With uh, I mean, you know, she it seems like most of the things she, she may have had already, but I guess it's all relative as well. It's also good luck, too. I hear when you look at a clock and it is like the all the same number. Right, if it's like two twenty-two or whatever, that's good luck, apparently. So, well, I'm about eighteen minutes away, so I'll look back at the clock then, and and we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's supposed to be random, just like oh, oh, good okay. luck. yeah. Uh, number four, yeah, that's not too strange, I guess. I think that's a, a lot of people are like Paris Hilton here. This one, I think, is strange. Now we're getting kind of strange. Okay. Demi Moore does uh, leech therapy. You know, leeches. Leech therapy. Yeah, le like actual leeches. Um, she Ugh. believes in it. So what? Well, how does that work? Uh, you I put wonder. The, yeah, well, you put the leeches on you for for real, and they uh, they suck your blood, Ooh. and you keep them on there. They used to do this, and it's actually I'm reading the Watch Mojo um, script here, and they're actually this was something that was done beforehand back in the old days. Well, I know a lot of this still goes on in different countries, but definitely, I, I think, very rare in America. So, I mean, but, you know, knowing celebrities, they probably, you know, if they want to find tactics from old times or from other parts of the world, I'm sure that's no shame. They're, they're probably not as closed off from some of this stuff as the everyday American, uh, but definitely interesting for sure. And I, I do know that some celebrities also do blood treatments where they put blood on their faces like other people's blood from a doctor i don't know this hollywood stuff is over my head matt but i know i, I don't think it's on this list but you're absolutely right i think it's called the vampire facial okay okay and i know right, this kim kardashian did it there you go that's that's wow. how i know this that's how i know this wow uh yeah that should be on this list but no she did uses the leashes <laughs> for um you know detox purposes apparently i wild takes the old bad blood and gets it out with the leeches. I hate leeches, so I will not be doing Ugh. that. Not, yeah, not in a million years, sorry. Uh, number I'm three is- just thinking of that. Oh, hey, listen, we were just talking about <clears throat> flying and I hate flying and what we do with the flights. Well, here's what Megan Fox does. This is kind of bizarre. Every flight Megan Fox takes, she listens on her earbuds or earphones, whatever she's got, to Britney Spears because, and I quote, <laughs> There is no way for a fact that a plane will crash while I'm listening to Britney Spears. That's what she says. <laughs> and that's her ritual. I what? guess she can't imagine a world where someone's listening to Britney Spears and the plane, something bad happens to the plane. This is a real thing. That's a fact. That she this, is, this may be the definition of first world problems. <laughs> so, you know, I wonder if she's still, you know, with Machine Gun Kelly. Right, they're touring now. Yeah, I, I had no clue with that of, of Megan me, Fox. Baby, one <laughs> machine, machine guns. Like, what do you do? Don't hit us. <laughs> yeah, please. 
Yeah. So there you go. Wow. Britney Spears. Maybe I'll do that. I'm. I'm. I, like I said, I hate flying. I'll do. Uh, maybe I'll do all of them. I'll touch the plane three times. In a, in a glass of Chardonnay, you'll you'll be deep an hour into that flight. I'll listen to Britney Spears <laughs> the whole thing. Oh, okay. Number two. This is interesting because we just talked about those vampire facials. Well, here's something that Tom Cruise does for his oh. face. It's called a. Uh, well, it's not called this, but it essentially is a bird poop facial. Hear me out. Wow, oh, you're so, uh, it's I, a I'm geisha. speechless, Matt. Here we go. It's a geisha facial. Okay, it's it's something that uh, obviously it's very popular in in the history of, of Japan, and uh, you know they're saying it's pretty exotic, but it's not really that exotic because it's bird poop. That's wow. essentially all it is. Wow. And they what they do is they kind of smush it around. But look at the results. Tom Cruise <laughs> looks pretty good. He does look good. I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd be curious. Uh, you don't think he's had any act done, do you? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's, it's all hard the bird to tell. Poop. Yeah, it's all the bird poop. <laughs> Who needs Botox? We need Burdocks, you know what I mean? This, this is the stuff that we really need. $180, $180 <laughs> per tr treatment, I think, is what they're saying. Wow. Well, or free if you collect birds i guess or just you know, walk around <laughs> walk around the beach yeah it'll take time seagulls. but you'll you'll get your free treatment oh man wow well, i don't know wow tom cruise well hey he looks good i can't take that from him that'd be great i don't know interesting i'm not gonna do it i'm getting ideas but i'm not gonna do it this is amazing right. number one here we go here's the strange thing and i've actually heard about this and it kind of makes sense morgan freeman wears those gold earrings do you remember do you know why do you ever see him i have i don't know why he wears them yeah so so any interview i guarantee you go on uh you know the tonight show or whatever the heck talk show he's on you'll see him uh morgan freeman walking around talking with these with these gold earrings is it for fashion not really uh because this is this is the reason he's put out and it's a little bit morbid so he says that uh he always wears two gold earrings and the explanation is that should he die in a location that's far from home, hmm. his earrings are worth the exact amount it would cost to purchase a coffin. Whoa. Okay. So what? let's say, so let's say he's abroad and you know, and he drops dead. He wants to be buried there in a coffin. So those earrings are meant to be pawned off. And then you purchase wow. him a, a nice coffin. So that's his fear that he would die somewhere else and they won't bury him in a coffin. That's why those ear that's what those earrings are, the currency. I don't know why he just doesn't put some money in a wallet. And you know what? I think this de rightfully deserves number one because like I think that kind those kinds of assets, I think that's the last thing you should even be thinking you know, where that comes from. This is this is probably a deep-rooted thing with him. And uh, not really logical either, because like we're assuming here's where, people here's would where it comes, do no, it. No, here's where it comes from. It comes from this. Watch Mojo is telling us it's coming from sailors. There's there's history with uh you know pirates at the. But for, Freeman's not a pirate. He's not. <laughs> as far as we know. <laughs> but that's where it comes from. Apparently, back in the day with sailors and pirates. So that I, I, bodies, I guess, because they were all over the world. That that's interesting. Some yeah. history well here on Watch Mojo. But I think if Morgan Freeman, when the day comes where he dies, I'm sure they're going to, uh, you know, <laughs> give his body to his family, celebrate yeah. his life. And don't worry, Morgan Freeman, you will get a spectacular coffin, I guarantee you. But That's I the thing, I, I could never see him getting buried in a random country by random people. That, that wouldn't even happen, I don't think. No, I don't <laughs> think so. So I don't know. There you go. But they do look kind of cool. I like the, the gold earring look for Freeman. It's a I'm good not, look. It's a good look. So you should keep them regardless. Uh, hey, Cassius, this has been fun. All those that was crazy, good times. weird celebrity uh, rituals. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll try a few of them, just not the bird poop. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today, Cassius. Yeah, speak for yourself. Man. I'm going to get a facial, so uh, we'll see you later. <laughs> All right, everybody, stick around because it is time for our Mojo Chat of the Week. It's uh, Ferdinand Kingsley from the new Netflix series, The Sandman. Finally, the Sandman is uh, is on its way to Netflix. The long-awaited series, uh, the of course live-action adaptation of Neil Gaiman's 
classic comic book series and I can't wait to chat all about it with Ferdinand Kingsley, one of the stars of the series. Hey Ferdinand, how's it going? Thank you. I rarely get called a star of anything, so it's uh, that's enough for me. I think I might just log off now. That'll do me. No, no, please stay. Please stay. I do, <laughs> no, okay. I do, other, ahead, no? I do have other questions. Well, it must be exciting because, I mean, hey, you're in the Sandman series for Netflix. That must be pretty cool. I'm in the Sandman. And it's actually coming to life. It's actually coming out after a billion years of, you know, attempts at making it. But, you know, two two years after? No, one year after we made it. You know, one year after I made it. They made it for a long time before that. It's, uh, I, I kind of can't believe it. I am still slightly in disbelief that I'm a part of it. And hopefully if they let me and let us, I'll be a part of it for a while to come. I, I just think it's, um, it's glorious and it's unashamedly wild and uh, it's fantastical and it's human rooted. And uh, it's kind of everything that, that you hoped it could be when you read the comics and you think surely they can't they can't even try to put this on screen well they've they've tried and I think I think they've they've done it justice what is it about that comic going back I think it was what 19 yeah 1989 the first one came out Neil Gaiman yeah. put it out yeah uh, and the story I mean we've had some uh, adaptations now I think the the original ran ran until 1996 but people hold that for Nan in such high regard that's like you know, that's right up there with like the gems of the comic industry. Yeah. What is it? What is it about that story? Do you, do you think? I don't, well, for me, it's that it really does feel like it's kind of what a lot of great uh, graphic novels and comics do. And it, and it does it sort of basically perfectly in my mind is it, is it, um, it has both the sort of depth of, uh, of quality and prose of a novel and the the visual sort of splendor of a superhero comic without being a superhero comic necessarily and and the arc of something huge that you trust you can read it and trust that it knows where it's going and i think that it was just the the a sort of golden meeting of those three things that 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 really resonated with people and and showed that uh although you know it's not the first to do it but really showed that that comics don't just have to be dudes in capes comics can be uh, another um medium that's just as valid as as the novel yeah no absolutely what was what's your relationship with that source material is this something that you discovered uh prior to signing on or did you have you read it or were you familiar with it beforehand yeah i i i i had but but not for i hadn't for a long time so i was very familiar with it because my older brother ed who is now getting a lot of shout outs from me and, and should anyway, because he's a great older brother. But he uh, he was an obsessive Sandman fan when we were growing up. Mm. So so he when he would have been about 15 or 16 and I was about nine or 10, uh, they were everywhere. And as a nine or 10 year old with a 16 year old brother, you're always either you know breaking into his room when he's not there to steal his stuff or, you know, going, oh, can I can I borrow your cool boy stuff? So he he had the comics and he had drawings of them of the characters everywhere he had uh he had an acoustic guitar which he painted black and and done a white portrait of morpheus on the back of it he'd actually written uh one of hobbs speeches from later in the series on the guitar which he reminded me as soon as i got the part by quoting it to me so it was it was it was there for me like as a little guy kind of in the background but me you know, he let me look at some of the pictures, not all the pictures, and and just sort of explained that it was about a guy that would visit you in in your sleep, and I thought it was the coolest thing. And then later, as I sort of you know developed the brain to be able to process some of it, I got into it myself. So when it when firstly when I saw that that Netflix were making it, I thought, well, you know, someone's got to give it a bash, and if anyone's prepared to, that you know, equipped to, they are. And I will watch this from afar and, and sulk about not being in it, like I do with most things. And then, and then I auditioned, and I thought, well, you know, at least I'll be able to say I auditioned for this thing, so uh, I can tell you what the initial scripts were like. And then they made a massive mistake and said I could be in it. So I kind of, um, it was kind of before I knew it. It was, it seemed like a, before I knew it, I was, I was part of it, and and on set, and it all seemed. Um, 
very normal and uh, uh, and matter of fact until I stepped onto set and went, oh yeah, no God, I'm I'm actually in the Sandman. And there's because I'd met Tom before and we'd rehearsed together and I'd met Kirby, but actually I'd yeah I'd only met Kirby a couple of times, but but I'd not seen them in costume, and I'd not been on those, I'd not been on a, on a Sandman set, so. I stepped on and suddenly he was there and I was in it and it and it sounded right and it felt right and it smelled right and it was uh it was proper playground you know it felt like I was to without you know you can beat me out but I was a pig in shit you know I just loved it no absolutely and you say that they made a mistake but you know what Nate, Neil Gaiman said aside from Tom you were like the perfect casting. He's exactly who he had in his mind. So clearly, clearly you were the, uh, the their only choice. Um, and I could totally relate <laughs> to the older brother. I had an older brother and I would go in his room and, and read like the pro wrestling magazines for me. That was the- uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother, WWF. <laughs> That's right. Then. My yeah, brother was... Was, I, yeah, I used to watch his, his Steelers VHSs and watch them. <laughs> yeah, watch the Royal Rumbles. <laughs> absolutely uh okay talk to me about the cast we mentioned tom i mean that that's pretty cool um uh, the, by the way everyone does a fantastic job i've seen some episodes and I'm, I'm completely blown away and i love the acting uh i mean the whole the whole uh production looks fantastic but i think these these, mm -hmm. these characters are just done so well uh, coming from someone who's read the book but what was that cast dynamic yeah. like i know we were filming kind of during our lockdown periods uh, did you have a chance to very much so hang out we, at all we, backstage were, we were slap slap bang in the in the middle of um mm. of lockdown so it was uh it was the most people i'd hung out with for a long time but <laughs> i i i as hob only really i 90 x 95 percent of what i say in the show is is to tom is the yeah. dream and the other five percent is to is to jenna coleman who is a is a friend of mine anyway because we we work together for about three or four years on on a show called Victoria a few years ago so that was lovely to have a friendly face um but so my only real constant was was Tom and it was funny because it, Hob and and Dream are kind of doing what actors do which is just sit around and and bitch and show off you know so as soon as it would cut we'd just basically carry on chuntering away and uh working out the people that we you know had in common or relatives who were old pals from decades ago or you know who who we hate or no hang on we don't hate our relatives other actors that we hate obviously <laughs> because you, know, you have to hate anyone that's not you um and and i just tom is just absolutely lovely and um he's the kind of he's the kind of guy that you want leading the ship because he is there to work and he is he's a fan as well and he is at least to me was saying you know i can't i kind of can't believe that i get to do this so there was no sense of um you know he's not the kind of number one on the call sheet to chuck his weight around he's the kind of number one on the call sheet to, to lead by example by turning up being perfectly prepared by being excited by being up for um making the other person in the scene look as good as possible and I think he's just got a really, really cool attitude. And, and he's, he's what I would hope to be if ever I were leading a show. Yeah, absolutely. I think you nailed it. And he is, he looks amazing. Like he looks like he stepped off God, of doesn't he? comic page. It's, it's, it's mind blowing. Doesn't he? It's amazing. Doesn't he? And he, the, what, what he'd done with his um, physique as well to, yeah. to, you know, to stay healthy and make his body have that shape. You know, he's, he did it sensibly. He didn't do it in a sort of kamikaze approach. He, he uh, he really, yeah, he took it seriously and he, he went for it. I think he's brilliant. He's no, brilliant. Was... He looks like you want and he sounds like the speech bubbles do in my head. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely does. All right. We, we, talk, we mentioned your character. We should probably explain it to people that haven't uh, seen the Sandman or know anything about it. Uh, tell us a little bit who you are and give us a bit of a tease. We obviously don't want any spoilers uh, mm. because it's so much fun to explore. But uh, your character is someone a yeah. little different. Yeah, so Hob is is a human. There don't seem to be that many of them in, in the Sandman, but Hob is a human person who um, in the year of our Lord 1389 is overheard by uh, Dream and Death in a tavern um, bragging about how essentially death is just, dying is just something that everyone does because it's cool. Well, not because it's cool, but it's just because it's the done thing. Yeah. Uh, and and because Hob is the sort of original uh, 
trendy wannabe hipster. He is, uh, is I'm, just, I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it because I'm going to plow my own furrow field. I am going to take my own path and I'm just going to not die and see what happens. And, uh, and Dream overhears him and goes, all right, well, give it a go. And uh, the deal is come back every hundred years and check in and see whether you want to carry on living. And, uh, and it kind of goes from there. And, you know, Hob is not entirely sure whether he's being told the truth, but he knows he's in the presence of someone at the very least weird. Um, and so uh, without giving away the entire episode, cut to a hundred years later and uh, take it from there. Absolutely. Your character is a big fan favorite, by the way. So, uh, a lot of people are, were excited yeah. to see your character in particular hit hit the big or hit the the live action uh, realm. Um, hit, hit, hit the screen of whatever size you've got. Whatever, whatever yeah, exactly. Could be a phone, could be a TV <laughs> screen, could be whatever screen yeah. you're watching it on. Um, daunting. I mean, those are some. I mean, with a property this size, I can only. I'm speaking for myself. If I was put into a property the size of the Salmon, where people hold it in such high regard, uh, I would be shaken like a leaf. To I don't. You don't want to mess. Yeah. It up. It, it, Daunt, daunting in as far as you don't want to yeah you don't want to you don't want to cock it up but also um there is it's rare that you get something where there's so much where there is so much material where there's so much to to work with it's not like i was playing um someone well actually that doesn't really make sense but you know it's not like i was playing someone that everyone had expectations for but there was nothing for me to build from mm. i um it was Part, that was part of the fun yes it's a pressure but it's it's a pressure that it's also a it's, god this is a, a trite thing to say but it's, it's a privilege as well and mm -hmm. also meant that i got to uh buy loads of spare copies of the comics and and <laughs> cut them up into cut i cut all the panels out and stick them on the page next to each <laughs> section of the script and nice. uh, yeah because it's because then you're thinking right is there a little moment where i can sneak in something that is you know that's a that's a visual echo of the comic that i don't even need to announce but that maybe i can just sneak in a little hand movement that hob does in the comics or sneak in a look or something that that, that if you know if one of the squillion people who watches sandman spots then then i've won and if that one person is me then fine <laughs> you know amazing amazing uh okay well before we go i i just want to touch on the the, the look of the, the film which i already mentioned was was fantastic i yeah. love the costume that the production yeah. design uh we filmed what in the united kingdom is that where we filmed most of it yeah 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 at shepperton studios yeah there you go uh is there anything from that set or from episodes that maybe not episodes that you were in but that you've seen that you would like to take home maybe hang it on your wall maybe a, maybe something oh, you already, maybe you already took yeah. something i don't know no, I you know you know what I didn't because I usually try to steal at least one thing from oh, every okay. every job. But I did I steal anything? <laughs> Just between uh, me and you, you don't have to. I mean, beyond beyond a T-shirt that they let me have, I uh, <laughs> I think I stole a beer map from the nineteen eighty nine pub. Um, but those those sets were just absolutely magic. Yeah. You know, the way they, they the way they did it was they had two adjoining sets, two pubs back to back with each other. And we'd be filming on one mm -hmm. and they'd be building the next century on the other. And it was absolutely magic because you'd you'd walk into it and it was it was the same pub. It was the same, it had the same soul, the same spirit, the same floor, the same cracks in the pavement. But in the sort of paving slabs, but but it had but it had aged a hundred years and been bits been torn down and fixed and replaced and the the love and the attention to detail with which um, the crew you know built them and and with which you know John Steele went about designing them um, uh, was was ridiculous and such uh, and and just made my job like a billion times more fun. And also, you know, working with Anne Fenton, who did the, the hair and makeup for my character was great because we were, you know, playing around with what I'd, I'd, I had extremely locked down hair. So I had a lot to work with <laughs> um, for her to, you know, either use or to attach more bits to. And I had extremely locked down beard. Um, so that's that's all model zone, especially in 1389. There's a lot of hair that I that I brought with me for free. That she then hacked into and she had this amazing spreadsheet on which she would sort of 
plot out what century we were in and what I could have that was mine, what had to be stuck on, what would have to be shaved into, what would have time to grow for the next. It was brilliant. And Sarah, Arthur's costumes were just, uh, were perfect as well, especially the, the 1500s. That's my favorite costume. I think the, the, the Shakespeare scene, that's, God, mm-hmm. it was amazing. And I ate, oh my God, I ate so much in that scene. I ate so, I made the mistake of going, well, there's food on the table and it's all real. I might as well eat it forgetting that of course you do 7,000 takes and then you know as you're putting your 600 chicken thigh in your mouth going I regret nothing well see we the audience like there's like a spit bucket you're not actually eating we think like oh okay cut and then I mean there is a spit bucket but I'm I'm also essentially an actor at a buffet and an actor at a buffet (laughs) is out of control put an actor in front of a buffet and that buffet is empty in seconds so i you know put put roast chicken in front of me that's not lasting very long you're not the only one well it is a visual splendor <laughs> yeah. uh and it is a is a whole heck of a lot of fun whether you're familiar with sandman or not uh definitely do check it out uh ferdinand thank you so so much for joining me today this has been so much fun All right, well, that's going to do it for this edition, everybody. Uh, big thanks going out to Cassius Morris. Always a blast having Cassius on the show. And hey, Ferdinand Kingsley. How cool is that guy? Make sure you check out The Sandman on Netflix. Guys, I really enjoyed it, and I know you will too. Till next time, I've been Mr. Hollywood. Pop in that culture. <laughs>